Hello, video three, 2402 immune system. So here we are on slide number nine, and we're moving on to the a group of cells called antigen presenting cells. I'll probably say that a lot. I might say APCs. These are the ones that I was saying earlier have those class two MHCs on them. So these are cells with special surface proteins that are uh, built to grab an antigen, grab something, uh, an antigenic determinant from a bacterium or from whatever, or a par virus particle or whatever, and show it to the other cells of your immune system. So it's kind of like if you found a clue to a crime and you showed that clue to the, to the detectives, that would help them solve the crime better. So these guys go around, and as you can see, they're dendritic cells and macrophages and B cells. These are all guys that are going to be able to phagocytize. So they scarf up something uh, and show it to naive T cells. Remember, naive T cells are the ones that haven't experienced any sort of antigen yet. So this is going to be taking place in the uh, lymph nodes, let's say. Um, when that naive T cell gets switched on, it's going to really gear up everybody else. Uh, when B cells present, they present to helper T cells. Now I say over here, dendritic cells and macrophage present to, uh, present to and activate naive T cells. That's cool. Uh, those T cells become not naive very quickly and, like I said, gear up the rest of the, uh, the response. B cells present their uh, antigen, whatever antigen they're going to show, to a special group of T cells called helper T cells. Helper T cells um, should be called mandatory T cells because without them, your immune system is not going to work. Uh, when you show the helper T cells this antigen, they're going to really switch on all the other cells in the immune system, especially the B cells. <clears throat> so it's kind of like a mutual uh, congratulations society here where so one guy says, hey, I found an antigen. Good, let's get pumped up about it. And so then everybody starts getting amped up and uh, they go around and just start going crazy and killing uh, whatever it is that was holding, whatever it is that has that type of antigen. Here's a summary of their of their uh, functions and some other characteristics of them. This is a good, concise summary, so do study that. I'll talk about these guys a little bit later. And I'll start off on humoral immunity right now. I'm not going to go farther with this screencast, but we'll start it off. So this is the branch of your adaptive immune system that uses antibody and B cells. So we have naive B cells. If you remember, those are just the B cells that are made in the bone marrow and do their maturation down there. Then they're all naive. Naive is like, you know, green. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, big brave world. Sure is scary. So they go to the lymph nodes, get exposed to antigen. They bind to uh, antigen and become uh, active. Now, that's going to be binding to an antigen that's shown to them by an antigen-presenting cell. Once they become active and key antigen-specific, they're going to make copies of themselves. And this is, was covered in an earlier, uh, earlier slide, but they're going to clonally select, make loads and loads and loads of copies. Differentiation is right here. Most of those copies become what are called plasma cells. These are the effector cells of the B cell group. These plasma cells make antibodies. So these are the workers, right? These are the guys that go out there and pump out the antibody that's going to fight that one antigen. But a small number of them become this elite class called memory cells. Memory cells don't produce antibody, but they hang around. So even after you defeat that first infection, memory cells will live year after year after year, decades sometimes, and a decade later, when you get the same bacterium, these guys are going to respond to it. Now, they don't all live decades, and you sometimes need boosters and stuff, but we'll talk about that. That memory bestowed upon us by those memory cells gives us what we call immunological memory, which means that the first time you ever do something, it's not going to be that good of a, of a job, right? You ever remember the first time you tried to ride a bike? you crashed or the first time you tried to, I don't know, ski or juggle or shoot about anything, right? Uh, do math, whatever. First time you try it, you're not going to be great at it because you got to 
it's a brand new infection. This is a brand new bacterium. I'm not ready for it. And you can see over here, here is exposure to whatever antigen it is. And a few days later, you're going to start producing antibodies, but your reaction is going to be kind of weak, right? So if you get exposed to uh, coronavirus, you're going to develop a, an immune reaction to it. You're going to build antibodies to it, but it's, you know, relatively a small hill you climb. Uh, this is the how this axis is how much of the antibodies present in your blood. So you're not going to be able to make that much. Let's just say you survive, right? Well, you survive, yada, yada. There you go. Good job. And if, let's say coronavirus, that's the example I use, but if coronavirus is something you can develop an immunity to routinely, if you got sneezed, sneezed on again sometime later, uh, you are going to have a very rapid and very significant response to it. So this is why people that have been exposed to chicken pox, uh, they say you only catch it once, right? But uh, you, you, can be, you can catch chicken pox time after time after time. You only get sick really bad the first time, usually. The second time somebody sneezes on you, gives you chicken pox, some kindergarten kid, you're going to go, oh, I've seen this before because I've got memory cells. And you're going to be able to pump up, you're going to be able to divide and divide and divide and make a lot of more plasma cells that are similar, that are just like the old ones, and are going to fight back that infection. So you might not even feel it. You're going to have caught it. You just won't notice it. And probably get rid of it pretty quick. Here, this is just an example. If you get another antigen, you're going to have a primary response to it. So any new antigen, you have to have a brand new primary response. The secondary response, which is this tall hill over here, Secondary response is much faster, much stronger, and it's because you have those memory cells around. Now, both of these are going to be forms of what they call active immunity because you're building your own antibodies. Active immunity is just something that you're actively involved in. So if I get repeatedly bit by a, by a, species, a certain species of snake, I'm eventually going to build up antibodies to it that will allow me to effectively be immune to that snake snake bite. Uh, I know a guy that that happened to, but uh, either case, primary response, it's you developing your, your memory cells. It's still you being active, right? You're developing memory cells and producing antibody. Secondary response, you're still developing memory cells and producing antibody, so they're both active immunity. The next screencast will start off with the difference between active and passive. I'm just going to cut it off here for time's sake.